Solving by factoring. Now let's talk about solving periods. Solving is a bit of detective work, like here's my magnifying glass, and it's trying to find the value of a variable that will make the left side equal to the right side. And there's many different tools in our toolbox for trying to find the value that will make the left side equal to the right side. For example, if I got some, sim something simple like this, 3 plus x equals 5, I can just look at it and realize that, well, 3 plus something gives me 5, so by inspection I can tell that this x is equal to 2 because 3 plus 2 is 5. We call that by inspection and that's okay. If I got something like 2x minus 3 is equal to 4, well I may be able to look at this by inspection but I may not. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate. So if I want to isolate, I'm going to move things over, I want to do 3 over, so that's going to be 2x is equal to 4 plus 3. That gives us 7. And then this 2 that's multiplying goes to the other side dividing. And we end up that x is equal to 7 over 2, which was harder to see uh, in that way in uh, by inspection. But when we have something like this, x squared minus 3x plus 4, I cannot isolate it because I've got x squared and x that they can never be put together. So no matter which one I take from this side or that side, I just can't find an answer. So this is where factoring comes into place. And let's look at how do we solve equations if they equal zero and only if they equal zero. So if it's in factored form, if I got three times x gives me zero, a bit by inspection, I know that the only number that I can multiply a number to make it go to zero has to be zero, right? So I know that by inspection, x is equal to zero. Now if I have this other example, x plus four and x minus five. Now that, those are two brackets that represent one number each. So this number multiplied by what number will give me zero? Well only zero. So therefore I need to make this brackets equal to zero. Which value will x take so that x plus four gives me zero? Well it's minus four. So therefore by inspection again x is equal to minus 4 in this case. And in this case, well, x is equal to positive 5 because 5 minus 5 is equal to 0. Now, x can't be minus 4 and minus 5 at the same time. So it looks like we're going to have two separate solutions in which is equal to 0. Now, if it says equal to 0, it means that I'm looking for the actual x-intercept, which means that it's going to cut the x-axis in two spots, and that makes sense because the parabola either opens up or opens down, but could cut um, the parabola, sorry, the x-intercept in two places. So I can have two different answers, and that's all right. If I got something like this, well, I may be able to look at this as x plus 3 and see that x is equal to negative 3. That's easy to see. I'm going to show you how to figure this out by inspection too. And let's see if this makes sense. If not, I'm going to show you uh, just the isolating way, which is perfectly fine. Just isolate it and you get the answer. But you can do this in one step. What do you want this to be? You want that to be minus 1, so that minus 1 plus 1 gives you 0. But if that's minus 1, it's being multiplied by 2. So I need to divide it by 2, so both of them cancel out. If that went too fast, don't worry, because we're going to do it again. But it's minus 1 over 2. Again, if I put a 1 here, a minus 1, that would be minus 1 plus 1 is 0, but because there's a 2 in front, I need to divide it by 2 to cancel the 2 out. Now, if that doesn't make any sense to me, I'm just going to isolate it. I'm going to go aside and go 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, so then 2x is equal to minus 1, and now I bring the 2 over, and we end up with the same answer. Okay, so that's when it's already in factored form, and it's equal to 0. But let's get a little trickier. What if it's not in factored form? Well, if it's not in factored form, I'm going to have to use my factoring tree. I remember that I need to do common factor first, check for special cases, simple trinomial, complex trinomial, as we covered in the previous videos. So, 
I can't isolate for this, but if I put it in factored form and make it equal to zero, it's easy. So common factor, can't take out common factor. Could this be a difference of squares? No. Could this be a perfect square? That's not a perfect square, so no. So this is a simple trinomial. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative five and add up to negative four. The two numbers have to be one plus, one minus, so that's going to be five and one. And it's going to be minus five and positive one to make this work. So x minus five and x plus one is equal to zero. Now, I can't stop here because I haven't solved for it. What is the value of the, of the variable? Well, this number, if I want this bracket to go to zero, my x has to be positive five. And from this one, my x has to be negative one. Negative, it's not working. Negative one. And that makes sense, right? That's good. So next one, x squared plus 6x plus 10 is equal to 2. Well, I can't have that equal to 2. It's got to be equal to 0 for this to work. So I need to bring it over. So it's going to be x squared plus 6x plus... Now I'm going to do this in one step. 10, this is minus 2, so 10 minus 2 is 8. Now it's equal to 0. Let's see if we can factor this. Well, I've got... Uh, there's no common factor can be a perfect square. So this is a simple trinomial. Look for two numbers that multiply to 8 and add up to 6. They have to both be uh, two positive numbers. So that's going to be 4 and 2 that multiply to 8 and add up to 6. So x plus 4, x plus 2. And of course you could have written x plus 2 and x plus 4. And now we had to solve for it. So that's just the, the factored form. Now we solve for it. And that means that x has to be equal to negative 4. And from here, x has to be equal to negative 2. Okay. Okay, let's check that last one. 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 equals 0. It's already equal 0, so that's good. But now I got bigger numbers. Can't take out common factor. It's not a perfect square, so that's me a complex trinomial. So I need to a box that give me 6x. Hmm. Hopefully it's 2x and 3x. I don't know, it could be 6 and 1, so I don't know. And then 3, it's 3 and 1, and 1 and 3. Now because the 3 has common factor here, I know this is not going to work. So that's 2 and 9. With 2 and 9, can I make 7? Yes, as long as it's minus 9 plus 2. So minus 9 plus 2, which means that this is 2x, 2x minus 3. And that is 3x plus 1. Equal to 0. So now I can do that thing that I was telling you on the, on the previous board. I want this number to go to plus 3, because that's minus 3. But if it's a plus 3, I need to get rid of that 2. So therefore, x here would equal to plus 3 divided by 2. That's one answer. And in this case, I want that number to be minus 1. So if that's minus 1, I need to get rid of that 3. So it's going to be minus 1 over 3. And that's my solution.